Hi guys, it's Sunka and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to do top 10 the best Dragon Ball games of all times. If you're a Dragon Ball fan and like to play video games, then you're lucky. Because a lot of anime franchises didn't got as many good games as Dragon Ball. I have one rule for this top, I can't pick two games of the same series. Dragon Ball The Attack of Science, the Dragon Ball RPG on the Nintendo DS. It has a turn-based battle gameplay with a lot of strategy on it, and the story is quite unique. It starts before the beginning of Z, you replay the Tenkai Shibutokai where you beat Piccolo Daimao, and it ends at the end of the Saiyan arc. This is a quite unique Dragon Ball game, you're not gonna play any other Dragon Ball game like that. And a lot of you probably never played this game, so it's definitely a good experience, and definitely a game you should try, especially if you like turn-based battle game and RPGs. Dragon Ball Legends is the current best Dragon Ball mobile game to me, that's why I had to put it on this top. It has a big variety of characters and some of them actually feel unique. Like you and Goku for example, you have a unique meta which allows him to do some dodge. Like most gacha game will have make you and Goku a character which is actually stronger than the other Goku and nothing else, just more heals, more damage, stuff like that. Here they made him unique, just like in the show. They pay a lot of attention to do stuff, even if it's a gacha. Most gacha mobile alien games are just level your characters up and put the game in auto. But this game is not like that. It even has some official tournament made by Bandai Namco, and it has a competitive scene. But it's a gacha, obviously it's gonna be pay to win. That's why it's that low anti stop, but it's definitely worth checking out. This is a Dragon Ball fighting game developed by R System War, the same devs as Dragon Ball Fighter Z. It's a very simple fighting game with a big roster. The story mode covers the DBZ story with some slideshow and fights. You have the story of the Z team, and after finishing it, you can redo the story for each character. You will relive the story with the point of view of two characters and redo their fight. And there is also some uh, not canon fights when you do that. Like for example, you can do Krillin vs Raditz. This fight never happened in the show, but uh, you have it, it's cool, you have new interaction. For the gameplay, you you can make a team of 3 characters like DBFZ, but one character slot can be replaced by 2 support slots. So in this game you have support only characters and you can replace one character by 2 supports. For example you can do a team of 2 characters and 2 supports or 1 character and 4 supports. Other than that the gameplay is very simple, you do some auto combos with 2 buttons and then you press a button at the end to do a special. But it's a lot of fun to play this game, I had a lot of fun unlocking every single character and seeing all the special animation, learning how to play them. Even if the game Play is very simple, you're definitely gonna have a lot of fun playing this game. Dragon Ball Fusion is the ultimate Dragon Ball RPG on the 3DS. You can create your own character and unlock new characters. It's a turn-based battle gameplay with a lot of strategy on it, the direction where you hit your opponent to make him close to someone else, and then you can hit boss with an attack special. You can do a lot of stuff like that. It has an original story where Bulma made a new tool so everyone can fuse with everyone else on the Dragon Ball world. You want to fuse Beerus and Whis for example? That's possible in this game. The story is very cool, you have a cool art style with some chibi that you don't see a lot on Dragon Ball games and looks cool nicely. This game is very refreshing, it has a lot of fan service to the future. It's like a dream Dragon Ball game to me. You're gonna upgrade your character, fuse them together, and you can even do a fusion with your full team at 5. And also there is some fusion that you already know from the show, like Gogeta and Vegito. But if you fuse Goku and Vegeta in this game with the new tool of Bulma, you're gonna get some new fusion. Cause just like the Metaball fusion is different than the Potara fusion, this fusion is different than the other. So you're gonna get a new Gogeta for example in this game. And discovering all two fusions is very exciting, you have a lot of content, you have hundreds of our content if you want to unlock everything. So if you never played this game, it's definitely one of the best Dragon Ball games to me, I definitely recommend checking it out. This game is one of the best, if not the best way to experience Dragon Ball story. You can freely move around the Dragon Ball world with the open zone gameplay of this game. You can do that in other games like Budokai 3, but it was never as good as that. Here you have some big open areas that you can freely explore. You can go back to some places which are on the show where you saw some epic fights before. And this is pretty epic honestly. The story of this game is one of the best, if not the best of all the Dragon Ball games. You're gonna experience the story with that CC2 animations which are godlike. We saw it on Naruto Storm. We certain demon slayer to never miss for two animations. You can even play with the anime soundtracks to the DLC and just feel like you're in the show. Even if this game is amazing, it still have some bad parts. In the combat system you can't really do crazy combos, it's very basic. You have one need to attack and you can cancel it to specials or dodge. So you can extend some combos to the dodge but that's it, you don't have two buttons to combo or something. And another bad part about this game are the side quests. The side quests are very basic. It's go kill two guys or go search some items. It's very very basic. You saw two types of side quests in 
a lot of action adventure games. This game has some DLCs and he's not done yet about them. And one of two DLCs is definitely worth playing to me. It's a Trunks DLC. The Trunks DLC make you relive the story of Trunks before he go to the past to save the science from Cell and the cyborgs. And you can see him interact with Gohan just like in the movie. But you have some exclusive scenes which really make this DLC worth playing to me. You even have some scenes exclusive to the Dragon Ball Super manga which I'm not gonna spoil here in case you didn't play the DLC and you want to discover it. The Bardock DLC and two other DLCs are also coming to this game which is gonna be really hype. The Bardock DLC looks as good as the Trunks one from the first trailer. You can see you can explore new planets and stuff. I'm really excited for that one. And I think if you're a Dragon Ball fan, you definitely need to play this game. It's one of the best Dragon Ball games. One of the most, if not the most competitive Dragon Ball game ever made. It's by Noritaka Funamizu, the producer of Street Fighter 2. It has a small roster for a Dragon Ball game. It's a pretty decent roster for a fighting game, I would say. Not, not very big, but it's decent, you know, it's not that bad. But all the characters in the roster feel unique. They play very differently and all the characters have skill tree where you can unlock skills, but you can't unlock everything. You actually need to make some choices and depending on your build, you can make characters feel very different than the original he was and then the character uh, your opponent is gonna play. So for example, you and your opponent can both play Goku, but depending on the skill you both unlock, your two Goku are gonna feel very different. And that's honestly very good, because uh, in most fighting games, mirror matches are boring. But here, they are not boring anymore. You need to figure out the skill of the opponent to know to adapt and play well and stuff. So basically, it's not the same matchup if you fight a Goku or another one. You have to adapt to his skill. Movements are very important in this game, the game allows you to be very creative on the moment and with that you can do some crazy mix up with it. It has some very hard mechanics and sick combos. This game still have tournaments still this day and it was at EVO this year. If you're looking for a new GB game to play and learn which is very hard to master, it is definitely one of the best options. The competitive scene have a Discord server which will be on the description of this video or you can play the game it even as online if you want. This is the most solid arena fighter of the Blue Kite and Kashi series. The blue bar meter don't exist anymore, you have a lot of new dashes to go behind your opponent's stuff, making the opponent feel less wonky and feel way better. You also have a new rage mode, during this mod you can't do any special but you have a new type of teleportation which is gonna make you be more aggressive and neutral and you're gonna do more damage. It takes the Butokite and Kashi gameplay and just put it further. However the story mode is not that great, that's a series of battle against the CPU where you're gonna unlock new customizations, items and new characters. This story mode isn't great but it feels challenging, sometimes you are gonna have some type of fights where let's say for example you start with 1 HP or uh, your, your HP is gonna decrease during the fight or for the longer you fight the stronger your point will be you have two type of challenge during this story mode so it can be good to get used to the gameplay and get better at the game at the beginning but it's not a good story mode to me it is definitely the best dukai and kashi game just because the graphics and the gameplay i have way more fun playing cheese and playing budokai and kashi 3 and that's why is that high on the list This is the best Butokai game, it has a very cool exploration flight mode in the story. In terms of gameplay it's 2D, fighty game, very fun to play. Battles are epic with a big variety of characters. The story makes you replay the DBZ story with a bit of GT at the end so you have super sad for it the game. This game is still played and some new techs are still found. For example, Dr. Dopetia found a new tech a few months ago with Goku and that is wild to me like. A game that old which was out on PS2 and some people still found new tech on it, that is very wild. It's definitely not too late to play it. This game did not got all at all. You can still play this game uh, right now and have a lot of fun. Even discover it and have a lot of fun. You can also customize your character like Super Dragon Ball Z but it's gonna be more a statistic thing uh, instead of a skill thing. So for example you can have a Goku which deals a lot of damage and have uh, very little heals or a Goku which is very tanky and is not gonna do that much damage. When you see all the details in the fighting system and the story like the free roaming you can see that developers cared a lot about this game and were dedicated to it. They really wanted to to make a good game which catches the Dragon Ball atmosphere and which is good as a fighting game. Its transformation feels unique to play which is really cool to me like you're playing base Goku you won't have same moveset as Super Saiyan Goku or Super Saiyan 2 or Super Saiyan 3 and that's very very cool they feel like new characters. If you never played this game it's definitely a go to you can still play it now it doesn't feel that old to play it and you will have a great time. Today I bring Dragon Ball game to the next level in terms of competition. The story mode is not really fun in my opinion, 
It was built to be replayable, but all the CPU fights is boring to me. But labbing and improving on the game is a lot of fun. That's where the game is gonna shine. It has this bad part like the meta, but it's also a good part. They made the game beginner friendly. They also made some fun service features like the dramatic finish, which makes your fights even cooler. The graphics look insane, the animations too. The game is gonna get rollback soon, which is gonna make this game even better than it originally was. The netcode is gonna get to a next level and you're gonna lag even less online. That's gonna bring a new hype to the game and it's amazing. This game is one of the Dragon Ball game which have put the anime games into another level and that might change the future of anime games. If we ever get a game like Naruto Fighter Z or One Piece Fighter Z, it's gonna be because of this game. So this game is probably gonna make history. We have to be grateful about it. Now before we move to the number one, I'm gonna give some honorable mentions. Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit is a game that pushes forward the Budokai gameplay with next-gen graphics. Yes, PS3 was next-gen back in the days. Now it's not next-gen anymore, but the game still looks good. But the reason why this game is below Budokai 3 is because it has less content and a way smaller roster. The story ends at the cell arc, that's why it's not gonna be higher on this top. But I think the better way to discover the Budokai series if you feel like Budokai 3 looks uh, too old since it has PS2 graphics. Dragon Ball Z Infinite World is the Dragon Ball Budokai 4 that we never got. They remove some of the mechanics in the games that people like it because it looked cool but it wasn't good as a fighting game like competitive one but it looked cool it was a it was some party game mechanics that they removed and they replaced it by a mod which increased your defense and your attack the story is kind of like a best of you're only gonna play the best fight you're not gonna play as uh, a smaller fight on the story like you're not gonna do vegeta versus guldo for example and the story of this game is not made for everyone because it's gonna be very hard and when i say very hard i mean it even if you play on the lower difficulty there is no way you're not gonna die a single time. You're gonna die a lot on this game because some boss fights are really really hard. And they also added new characters to the game. So if you want to play with friends and want to have something closer to a traditional fighting game like Budokai 3, I think it's a better option because the gameplay is probably better as a fighting game and you have more characters. Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi 3 is the ultimate Budokai Tenkaichi game in terms of content. It has the most content, it covers the story from Goku being a kid to the end of GT. With the movies too, it has the biggest roster. I know some of you will disagree but I prefer Resident Blast gameplay that's why Resident Blast 2 is on the top and not Tenkaichi 3 but Tenkaichi 3 definitely have more content if you're looking for a big roster game with a lot of fan service just play this one instead Now it's time for the best Dragon Ball game of all time. A game where you feel it when you do a camera mirror. You not press just a bunch of buttons and think up on the screen. No, I want to actually make the camera mirror and punch my opponent. And for a game to be like that, I obviously talk about the game where you are Goku. Dragon Ball Z for Kinect. It uses the ultimate Tenkaichi engine, so the game is gonna look beautiful. And you fight for real. When you fight your opponent, you actually punch him. You are a science in this game. You're not just a gamer in your room which is pressing some button and doing the fight no you are a saiyan you punch your opponent you do some camera you are really gogo what this game is bad and you are calling me a troll to put it at number one and you also think i'm a troll to put a game boy box on the animation before and you want me to pick another game to have a true number one on this top all right all right i'll do it the true number one of this list is dragon ball xenoverse 2 this is the ultimate dragon ball rpg you create your own character among five types of characters saiyan human majin namek and Prisa's race each one of them have a unique transformation you play as a time patroller and fix the history because the history has been changed by Mira and Toa two are some exclusive villains from Dragon Ball Heroes and they are in this game so you're fighting them and trying to fix the history it's pretty cool to relive the story in a different way like for example when you fight Cell you're gonna see Metal Cooler coming and you have some exclusive events some exclusive interaction and it's very cool to do that and see all two stuff you have a lot of content in this game you have over 100 quests to unlock new skills new outfits for your characters this game have a lot of content the character roster is gigantic especially if you buy DLC there is a lot of DLC there is like 15 DLC or something like that in this game that's a lot of DLCs so the roster is big even without DLCs but if you add DLC to that it just become gigantic and this game keeps getting updated up to this day it has monthly red events it has a lot of cool stuff that you're gonna see on this game you have some new type of quests that just came with a collaboration with Dragon Ball the Breakers and it's a lot of fun to create your own character make a build with it like is this character gonna do a lot of damage with Kikua or is this character gonna have a lot of heals all two stuff are up to you this game came out in 2016 and still get dlc up to this day a new dlc is gonna come soon about the dragon ball superhero movie two characters are announced gamma one and gamma two the third one we don't know it yet but i suspect it's gonna be piccolo and if you saw the movie you know why it's piccolo this game is 
never dying. A few days ago, we got a new DLC with the collaboration of Dragon Ball Z Breakers. And the best part about it is that was free. And the fighting system is a ton of fun. I used to play this game competitively back in the days. That's why I put it above Dragon Ball Fighters. So they have a lot of good memories in this game and a lot of playtime. But two games can be split depending on personal preferences. I'm planning to do more content on Dragon Ball games in the next few months. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe. Anyway, that's it for my top 10 of the best Dragon Ball games of all times. Let me know in the comments if you agree, if you disagree. All to stuff, which game you think I forgot to put in the list. And I'll see you later. Bye.